I'm gonna show you guys how to build your very first sound system. Stay tuned. What's up everybody, welcome to Audio Architects. My name's Mike. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for joining me. And today I'm gonna take you guys step by step how to build your very first like home audio sound system. I know this because this can be a little intimidating for some people because a lot of people don't have the knowledge base and all this other stuff that the reviewers and all the people and all these audio files that you see in the groups and stuff. I know it can be a little cumbersome because when I first started, I didn't know anything from anything. I had to learn step by step. So my job today is to show you guys exactly step by step what you need, how to find it, how to buy it, uh, you know, how to put it all together. So I, that's my goal for today, and I hope I can actually like resonate with a lot of you because I know that I didn't have a guide when I first started. So this this can be a cool little journey we can do together. And also, like I said, I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to buy, where to buy it. All the stuff that we're gonna be discussing today will be the in the description below. So that way you can kind of just click on each link and go and check it out. You don't have to buy exactly what I'm recommending. However, I am gonna recommend a lot of things that are very easily attainable and not to mention inexpensive because I know when you're first starting out, you may not want to make a serious investment in audio because you, it might not be a hobby that you're into or it might just be something that you're putting together for your apartment or for your house or even for your bedroom that you just want your, you know, your TV to sound better or you want your movies to sound better or you want your music to sound better. So that's the journey we're about to take. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first few things we're going to need is we're going to need speakers we're gonna need some type of amplification and we're gonna need a source of some sort as well as cables to connect everything so let's go ahead and get started with speakers the reason speakers are so important it's because that's what you're gonna be listening to so you're gonna to want to get something that is comfortable for you you're gonna to want to listen to it first obviously and you're gonna to wanna to get a product or a speaker or whatnot that's gonna be, you know, your style. You know, depending on what kind of music you listen to, there's a speaker out there for you. So my suggestion would be go to Best Buy, listen to everything they got, and get a good idea of what type of speaker you like. Think about size. If you're gonna be doing, you know, floor standing speakers, bookshelf speakers, because bookshelf speakers, they can honestly fit almost anywhere you put them. Or you may even be interested in getting a sound bar. If you're just looking to amplify the sound of your television and get some really good sound, that's an option as well. So once you decide on the size of the speaker, you're gonna want to you know, figure out exactly what size you know, of that type of speaker you wanna get. Cause floor standing speakers, which are the big tall tower speakers, and small bookshelf speakers come in different shapes and sizes and obviously different price ranges. If you wanna stay under a certain budget, I totally feel you and there's definitely tons of options out there for you. You can honestly keep this whole process under even 500 bucks if you really want to. I mean, I always encourage people to get what's comfortable for them rather than worry so much about price. But if, if you are on a budget, but you need something that's gonna be cool, then you gotta look hard, you know, Amazon, Best Buy, um, that's pretty much it, Amazon, Best Buy. Cause if you, if you go to one of your, you know, hi-fi shops or something like that around town, you're gonna find a lot of things that are way beyond most normal consumer budgets. So let's start off with bookshelf speakers. Bookshelf speakers are small, they can basically fit anywhere, you know, you put them. Uh, you can buy little stands for them, make them look real cool. Uh, secondary, you're gonna wanna get a subwoofer if you're looking for that kind of bass. So if you're looking for bass and you're looking for something that, let's say you're watching movies in your living room, or let's say you just want that extra thump, you're gonna wanna think about a subwoofer as well. And this is why sound bars have become so popular is because they normally come with the bar and a subwoofer and amplification already all built in. And that's important because you're basically buying a one-stop shop, all-in-one, in a box type of situation 
that more, more often than not is going to sound pretty good. I've heard some Samsung sound bars, and I actually own a Klipsch Cinema 600 sound bar, and they both sound really, really awesome. You know, if you if you're looking for a bedroom or a small living room, let's say you have a small apartment, or even in, in, in like a guest room or something, totally cool, totally cool. And like I said, I'm going to link all that stuff in the description below. If you're digging this video so far, definitely smash that like button because we're going to get into some more stuff right now. All right, so let's talk about tower speakers. Tower speakers are going to be a lot more expensive because they are bigger. They're going to sound a lot better because you're adding more speakers to it. A lot louder, a lot more dynamic. Um, you're, you're just going to have a better experience with a tower speaker. I definitely would recommend a, a, a tower like Klipsch. Klipsch has some great towers at some really good prices. Um, also, Aperion Audio also has some really great options. Um, a Martin Logan has some really good options depending on budget. You know, that's, that's kind of getting into the higher budget, but I dig it. So in the clip ahead, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a few options as to what to look for in bookshelf speakers as well as sound bars so that way you can get a good idea of what to expect price wise quality wise and where to find it check this out when looking for a set of speakers there are a few techie specs you should always look for the first is hertz remember the lower the number the more bass you can expect from the speaker normally speakers that can go under 40 hertz will have a nice bass response the second is watts. The higher the watts, the more juice your speakers will need to push them. So make sure you take that into consideration when it's time to look at amplification. The third is the sensitivity of the speaker, which will come in the form of a number. For example, 90 dB, which stands for 90 decibels, which the higher the number means the easier it will be for the amplifier to power them. Lastly, take a look at the speaker itself. How does it look? How many drivers does it have? Normally a bookshelf speaker will come with two drivers, a mid-bass driver for voices and some bass, as well as a tweeter which handles all of the high frequencies produced by your music or movie. A floor standing speaker will normally have a few more drivers since the job of a tower speaker is to play louder than its smaller little brother, the bookshelf speaker. After you do some homework, listen to the speakers that you're interested in, test them out with your music that you listen to normally. That way you have a feel for how it will reproduce the sound. However, always remember that whichever speakers you choose will more than likely sound a bit different in your environment because everybody's listening area, especially at a big store like Best Buy, will have a different response due to the acoustics within the room. Here are a few options I would take a look at if you're in fact in the market for a new pair of speakers. The Sony SSCS5 is an amazing speaker that swings way beyond its price point of only $148 for the pair. I recently did a detailed review of this speaker, so if you are interested in learning more about it, check in the description below. I bought these and I have been very pleased. If you want a bit more of a bassy speaker for listening to hip hop and EDM, the Q Acoustics 3030i is an excellent choice. With only costing $399 for the pair, it's absolutely worth it. I also own these and love them. Now, you want to go all out? The Aperion Audio Veris 3 Grand Bookshelf Speakers are one of my favorite bookshelf speakers on the market and it's from a company that is family owned and the speakers are absolute quality. The bookshelf speakers come in at $7.99 for the pair and are worth every penny. Now. I know I mentioned soundbars and I feel that they are very effective in smaller spaces or if you are on a smaller budget. The cool thing about a soundbar is that they are really easy to set up and they've improved immensely in sound quality over time. Here are a few soundbars I would recommend. The Vizio V-Series 2.1 Home Theater Soundbar. I have owned Vizio soundbars in the past and I really like the sound they produced and for only $105, I consider it a steal. The Klipsch Cinema 600 soundbar 3.1 home theater system, which I personally own and it now lives in my bedroom, it offers amazing sound quality and incredible bass from the subwoofer provided. This one comes in at about $369. Now, the big daddy, the Samsung HW Q70T. This 
soundbar has Dolby Atmos, which basically what it is, is it points the speakers to the ceiling, giving you the illusion of having speakers above your head, which is a really cool experience when you're watching movies. This soundbar I've heard a few times at a couple stores, and I was very, very impressed with the quality. It does come in at 650, which is on the higher end of the spectrum for soundbars. However, if you do happen to have a chance to listen to it, I would definitely take the opportunity to see exactly what it can do and if it fits into your budget and into your system. Okay, so now that you have a better idea of what to expect from a speaker, let's go ahead and talk about subwoofers. Subwoofers are very, very important because that's what's going to add that low end bass. So I'm a huge fan of subwoofers and you can find them from anywhere from uh, like the low hundred dollar range upwards of four thousand dollars what, whatever your style is and budget is there's going to be a subwoofer for you so definitely do some shopping i'll give you guys in the clip ahead a few options that you should take a look at as well as in the description below i've done several reviews on subwoofers including building your own subwoofer which is actually kind of fun but if you're looking just to buy it, check out the description below because I have a ton of videos on subwoofers. I feel subwoofers are essential because most speakers in an audio or home theater system aren't capable of reproducing all of the frequencies your audio source sends to them. Without a subwoofer, you'll be missing out on some of those low notes. The low frequencies are also the ones that help produce that full rich dynamic sound we love out of our movie soundtracks and music. Here are a few subwoofers I would take a look at. The Stark Sound SW12 is a great choice if you are looking for a versatile subwoofer with plenty of rumble for your favorite movies as well as a clean crisp musicality for complementing your favorite tunes. The SW12 comes in at $699, however Stark has a B-stock section where you can get an open box version for much, much less. And they also do run specials periodically. The SVS SB1000 Pro is an excellent choice if you need a really nice quality subwoofer at a lower price point. The SB1000 Pro is new and only comes in at $499 and it can be controlled via SVS's mobile app. It has tons of features and tech within the unit itself. Lastly, I would try to look into possibly building your own. DIY is big right now. I did a couple builds myself, which you can check out in the description below, and I was quite surprised with the results. Now, amplification. As we discussed, sound bars come with their own amplification, so you don't have to worry about getting an amplifier because you could do you know, pretty much everything just from the sound bar. Now, if you're gonna be getting actual speakers, you're gonna need something to amplify it with. My suggestion would be to go with what is going to fit your scenario and circumstance. If you're going to be using this as a home theater situation or you know, in the living room to watch movies, definitely get an AVR, which is an audio video receiver. What an AVR does, it kind of puts everything, it's like your control center for your you know, home theater. You get to plug in your TV, your sources, your, it'll amplify your speakers. You can even add, uh, you know, sometimes record players and stuff like that to it. So definitely, definitely check out this clip where I go over a few amplifiers you guys might be into. Check it out. Unless you're using powered speakers or a sound bar, you will definitely need an amplifier. Within my home theater, I use the Denon AVR S750H, which provides me with plenty of power and features to run all of my sources as well as drive my speakers quite nicely. It only came in at a price point of $549, which I found had tons of value behind it. If you're just looking for basic amplification for your speakers and for your music setup, with good sound, I would look into something like the Yamaha AS801, it offers a good amount of features and power at a really good price of only $899. However, this is only going to be more for like a music setup rather than a home theater. Lastly, if you want a more feature rich and versatile system, I would take a look at the Marantz MCR612, which also includes a CD player for those throwback mix CDs, as well as streaming and AM FM compatibility. The Marantz comes in at $699 and works very well as an all in one type of unit. Okay, so now that we've spoken about amplifiers, which could also be used as a 
source device because a lot of amplifiers come with Bluetooth now and a lot of other options where you can connect, direct connect directly to the amplifier. However, if you want a separate source, and now a separate source would be a Blu-ray player, uh, you know, an NVIDIA Shield or some kind of streamer or music streamer, like a Blue Sound Node 2i, or, you know, even some kind of uh, root endpoint or some kind of little music player. So, or even a TV, a TV is a source as well. So think about your sources. Think about what you want to integrate into your system. If you're just looking for Bluetooth, then you'll be fine with the amplifier that has Bluetooth and you can just stream from your phone or from your tablet and you're good to go. You know, you can even hook up your computer to it. So, but if you're looking for something extra and you're gonna be watching movies and not streaming movies, then I would definitely consider either getting a Blu-ray player or an NVIDIA Shield, which an NVIDIA, the NVIDIA Shield I have has been absolutely amazing. I love my NVIDIA Shield. It does it all. It can do Netflix, uh, all the Amazon. You could do everything you could possibly think of is on this NVIDIA Shield. And it's Android based, so you can add more apps to it. So super cool. Che definitely check out the NVIDIA Shield. I will be putting the NVIDIA Shield in, in the description below so you can check that out. Okay, so the finale, the grand finale is gonna be cables. And I know a lot of people that are watching my channel right now and that have been subscribed to my channel for quite some time are gonna be like, Mike, we've never heard you talk about cables. We've heard you mention cables. We've heard you mention types of cables. But here is my whole take on cables. If you're just starting out, and you just want to connect your speakers and your subwoofer and you know your AVR to your TV via HDMI. So HDMI will hook up your TV, your Blu-ray player, and even your NVIDIA Shield directly to your audio video receiver. Now, if you have a soundbar that can do eARC, eARC is, uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk about eARC in a future video, however, if you, if your TV and your AV, uh, your TV and your soundbar have eARC, you just plug your TV directly to your soundbar via HDMI cable. And HDMI cables you can find for very, very inexpensive prices. Check out Pangea. Pangea makes some amazing, amazing, amazing um, cables. Also on Amazon, you can find a bunch. AudioQuest is also an option. That's getting a more on the expensive side, but you can get a decent you know, HDMI cable for, you know, 20, 15, 20 bucks, you know, if that. So make sure to check that out. Uh, aside from that, you'll probably need like maybe an optical cable. And what an optical cable does, it connects the, um, if through a digital input or output, if through a digital output, <sighs> this is getting too complicated. Basically what an optic cable, uh, optical cable does, it's a cable that hooks up to a source device that doesn't have an HDMI and goes straight to your AVR or into your soundbar and bada bing bada boom, done. It's just basically a digital cable that goes, that has like little red lights on the end of it. Super easy. Um, aside from that, uh, speaker cables, you're gonna be, you know, probably better off using something like Suell, which is really cheap. Um, I know if you go on Amazon, I'm gonna list a bunch of options on Amazon. Um, the fancier you wanna get, like AudioQuest, stuff like that, if you wanna spend a dime on that, go for it, won't hurt anything. It'll it'll look probably a lot better. However, if you're just wanting a basic setup, I'm gonna give you options in the description below. And I want you guys to check out this clip ahead where I'm gonna go over a little bit about cables and which ones you should choose and why. Check it out. Cables are essential because they act as the vessels from your sources to your amplifier. A few cables you will absolutely need are HDMI cables to hook up your TV, gaming system, NVIDIA Shield, and Blu-ray player to your AVR. You also might need an optical cable or RCA cables to also connect sources that don't have an HDMI output. Of course, you will need speaker cable to run from your receiver to your speakers. I'll make a list in the description below of some solid options that you should definitely take a look at. I understand there's a great debate between audiophiles who believe cables will make an audible difference and those that just don't believe it. If you're curious, test it for yourself. Trust your ears. All right, everybody, and that's it. That's, that's your whole system. So you can either go, wait, 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 wait. I forgot about one thing, powered speakers. Powered bookshelf speakers or powered tower speakers. 
Powered speakers are actually really, really rad because you can just basically set them up, plug in your source, and you're good to go. Via Bluetooth, via you know, uh, you know, know, regular RCA cables, whatever you wanna use. It's so easy because it's already ready to go. And a lot of times you could pair it with a subwoofer by the same company. I definitely recommend the Aperion Allaire bookshelf, you know, powered bookshelf system and or the Stark Sound VLOD system. But if you wanna keep it mellow, I definitely, definitely take a look at the Aperion Audio Allaire's. I think those are really, really cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a link of that in the description below. And I want you to take a look at this clip ahead that talks a little bit about powered speakers and why you should consider them for your system because it could save you a lot of money and it's essentially the same thing, the same concept as a sound bar. So check this out. There are a few advantages of choosing powered speakers in place of passive speakers. Powered speakers first and foremost come with their own amplifier which is integrated in the design and oftentimes optimized for the specific speaker system it's powering. It does limit your ability to upgrade your system in general and sometimes lack features like subwoofer output. However, if you want something simple, inexpensive and ready to go out of the box with no need for more separate components, then a powered speaker might be for you. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I was able to explain things in a way where you now have a better idea of what to expect getting into home audio. I know it's kind of intimidating because a lot of reviewers, including myself, oftentimes use a lot of fancy schmancy words and people just don't get it and don't want to get it you know they just want something that sounds good that's going to look good and that's going to be part of their life for a little while because i know how important music as well as watching movies can be and you want the best quality for the best price and i hope i was able to provide you with that today thank you so much guys for joining me if you like the content i encourage you to subscribe to my channel and as well as smash the like and leave a comment below if you have any questions i would love to answer questions from you guys my email is down there below too so just check that out if you have any questions shoot me an email just leave a comment whatever you want to do i'd be more than happy to walk you through the process i will definitely hold your guys' hands through the process because I didn't have anyone to do that for me and I want to be able to do it for you. So thanks again for joining me. I, like I said, I encourage you guys to try a bunch of stuff, take it home, listen to it. You don't like it, return it, whatever you want to do. But I want you to be happy with your journey in audio. And like I said, if you dig it, subscribe to it. We'll see you next week. Take care.